All right. 49ers, it, like I said, it's so funny, man. What a difference a week makes. I mean, last week we are talking about is this – is this the end of the season? And now it's have they figured it out or is it just the Rams? What what is your thoughts on this? I mean, have they really turned a corner here, or is it just they have the Rams number? Because I'll I'll say this: there's a lot of things you can count on in the regular season. Russell Wilson beating the 49ers, which is what happened last week, and the 49ers beating the Rams, right? right. So we saw both things play out in back-to-back weeks. Maybe we were too low after last week when we should have known they were going to lose to Russell Wilson. And maybe we're too high after this week when we should have known they would have beat the Rams. What are your thoughts overall? Have they figured it out or is it just the Rams? So here is, so I've had this uh, narrative throughout the whole off season from last year to this year. Right. And I think I mentioned, I was like you, I picked the Rams to beat the Niners this week. But I did say if the 49ers scored two touchdowns in the first half, that they would win the game, right? And they ended up scoring two touchdowns in the first half. They won the game. And the reason for that is this is a different defense when they're playing with the lead, right? Close games and things like that, that's where it becomes murky because, you know, it just becomes tough at that point. But if they can make a team one-dimensional by putting them behind the eight ball and them needing to score touchdowns, instead of just field goals to stay in the game, then that plays into the strength of this defense, which is the defensive line and uh, the secondary. But somebody earlier had mentioned it. They didn't score that much in the second half. No touchdowns, right, other than the defensive touchdown. What's one thing that you mentioned, Jesse? We haven't seen this offense be able to put together four quarters of consistent offense. So for me... I still can't confidently say that the 49ers have figured it out until they're able to consistently be able to score when they should be scoring, right? When there is good field position, when they are moving the ball down the field, they need to be able to finish drives. And we still haven't seen them be able to put four quarters together of that. So I'm still going to be cautiously optimistic, but say that they haven't figured it out. This was more getting up for a divisional game. They're playing at home against a team that they're very familiar with. Rams did have some injuries, especially along the offensive line that the 49ers were obviously able to take advantage of with their seven sacks. So I'm not ready to quite say they figured it out. I'm going to lean more towards this was the Rams, but we do have another three weeks to really see uh, if I'm right or if I'm wrong. No, I think that's a good point. I'm going to take a page out of your book. I'm going to say yes and no. And what I mean by that is... (laughs) What I mean by that is... No, I don't know if they've figured it out for the season, right? As far as can they go and beat some of these these tougher teams? the, The Chiefs, the Chargers, the Dolphins. Some of these... Maybe some of these AFC teams that have some firepower, right? But... Yes, they have figured out how to win this division. And I think I just look at this division. I look at the way the 49ers are built. And that's, you know, that's one of the things that that a lot of people that put together teams say is you have to figure out how to beat your division first. Win your division. Mm -hmm. Is your team built to win the division? And then once you get to the playoffs, we'll figure it out. This team is built to win this division. They just are. I mean, the defense... The other teams in this division, outside of Seattle, but really, I mean, they're not scaring anybody. The other two teams are built around the pass. The 49ers have pass rushers and an elite secondary. So you're not going to really be able to pass against them. Right. And they also are built to stop the pass. Well, the 49ers don't pass a lot. So (laughs) that doesn't really work either. So the 49ers are built to win this division. I would be shocked if they did any worse than five and one in this division. I really think they're that far ahead right now of the rest of the teams in this division. So I expect five and one wouldn't be shocked if they go six and oh. So the answer is yes, they figured it out as far as winning this division, which is step one. Have they figured out how to beat the real explosive offenses in this league? Uh, Time will tell. We'll see. And this defense is really good. Don't get me wrong. I don't have any questions about this defense, but you cannot expect this defense to stop every high-flying offense they come across. And when that happens, 
will the 49ers offense be able to put enough points on the board to go win those possible shootouts that are ahead of them? Time will tell. That was you, a very you like big that? You, you like that's, how I stole that? That was like the, 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 a terrible cop out a- answer. Time will tell. Like what <laughs> oh kind? What what are we this doing guy. on this show? What are this we doing guy. on last wow. second sports? Look, we're not talking about stuff down to the last second because time will tell. So we're gonna <laughs> push this into the. We're gonna push this to future seconds because who cares about last seconds anymore? <laughs> Put yourself <laughs> out on a limb, guy. <laughs> Jesse, what are we doing here? I'm just listen. I learned from the best. You used a yes and no answer earlier, and I'm. But I gave an answer after. I, I said sure yes and no did. as a joke. Sure. And I gave we'll an we'll right re-roll after. the tape after this. I Do don't it. believe it. I'm Do not it. buying it. Do oh my it. gosh. Last okay. Day, future. Hey, we're going. We're doing it down to the future seconds here on Future Second Sports. <laughs> <laughs> that, I, I like it there's there's a, a ring to that next week when you show up it's gonna say future second sports across I the top it. just for you I love okay it. i'm gonna ask this kind of a two-fold way first of all is kyle shanahan a bad play caller and and does it really matter like from an offensive standpoint does he have to be this incredible play caller for him to ultimately be a good head coach. Um, I think the way you phrase the question is, is he still a bad play caller? I think a lot of that is coming from some of the yes. outside talks about yes. how he just is a terrible play caller and all those other things. It was things. petty. It was, it was super petty. petty. But I will say this. <laughs> I, You know me. I have no problem killing Kyle Shanahan. I, this last week, I definitely went after the he's a genius tag because I think uh-huh. it is way too early for all that. But I also have been very fair in saying, hey, let's judge this guy like a a head coach, not just an offensive play caller. And when you do that and you take a step back, there's a lot of things that are really good with Kyle. So that being said, maybe we should ask it like this, though. Did Kyle show you something you didn't know, right? We asked that about Jimmy. Kyle called a good game, uh, a game for the most part. Now, the second half was iffy. A lot of people didn't like the the not going forward on fourth down at the one yard line, but is Kyle a bad play caller? And did you learn anything new about Kyle this week? Should we keep the trend? Let's go. Yes. No, I'm just kidding. Um, (laughs) um, I tweeted mid game about a certain series where Jimmy threw a ball high or there was a a play call where um, it was going to be a wide receiver screen to Ray Ray McLeod. And, and uh, Jalen Ramsey knocked the ball down, which is a great play by him. But that had potential to be a big gainer because the blocks were set up. And obviously, we know Ray Ray is really good with the ball in his hands. And then there was another play where uh, Juan Jennings was open um, to get a first down, and Jimmy kind of sailed it over his head, right? So it ended up being either a three and out, or obviously they had to punt after that. But it was two plays where Kyle Shanahan had schemed the receiver wide open to get uh, um, some major yards where the execution wasn't there. And if this didn't lead to uh, a a big win, like it ended up happening, you would have heard the same narratives that Kyle Shanahan doesn't know how to play call. You know, he can't move the ball, all this kind of stuff. And I tweeted that in the moment because I know sometimes guys like you – Jesse are out there nitpicking every single play and ignoring the plays that he he schemed up perfectly that were just badly executed. So I was like, "Is Kyle Shanahan a bad pay caller?" Um, it, well, if if the 49ers don't win this game, I just want you guys to remember these two plays where he he had these receivers wide open and they weren't executing right. So I don't think he was ever a bad play caller. I think it's just is Jimmy going to execute or is Jimmy not going to execute and. Not just Jimmy. Is Trey going to execute or is Trey not going to execute? Because there was some plays that when Trey was playing that he wasn't executing on where where um, Kyle Shanahan had schemed him wide open. I think there, the narrative around Kyle Shanahan and his head coaching prowess and his offensive genius prowess and his offensive play calling prowess is, is very much overblown. Um, you, you watch the All-22, and I watch you watch the All-22, and there's a lot of open receivers when you when you're breaking down those plays, and that isn't for everybody's offense, Jesse. I know you're 
you're not breaking down all 22 for all 32 teams in the league. But I guarantee you the 49ers are probably up there with the amount of wide open receivers they have uh, compared to the rest of the league. And that's why I think it, it, the main criticism for Kyle Shanahan is he hasn't figured out his quarterback situation in six years of being on the team. And I think that's absolutely a fair criticism because we shouldn't still be having quarterback issues in year six of your tenure, right? Especially when you have the number one ranked defense and the defense has gone on this trajectory, offense should be going the same way. So, um, yeah, I, I think that Kyle Shanahan still still has a bag, one of the deepest bags in the league, but we're always going to have this conversation until he fixes the quarterback situation. Yeah, for sure. And and one thing that I'll, I will say is, obviously, I've been really, really high on Kyle, and I've been really, really low on Kyle. But the one thing that I have remained consistent on, regardless of, of what my thought is in the moment about Kyle, is he's the head coach of this team. And I've always framed it that way. I hate it when people say, well, I mean, he's, he's what, what more do you want from him? He's dialing it up. The quarterback's not making the throws. It's like, well, he picks the quarterback. Like, that's it's also his fault. But then the flip side of that is when people want to kill him for not making the the best play calls or or whatever they want to take the opposite stance i'm like well i mean you can't say this defense is great and then only blame him for the offense because he's the head coach he picked those groceries too right so the this goes both ways i mean at the end of the day we just have to stop looking at kyle shanahan as the offensive coordinator yes he calls the plays i get that but that's not all he is he's the head coach of this team so everything you like about this team whether it's defense, special teams, a certain coach, um, maybe you like John Lynch, whatever. All of that is Kyle Shanahan. And everything you don't like about this team, undisciplined in week one, uh, questionable clock management, having Jimmy G still be your coach, whatever it is, picking Trey Lance, whatever I don't know, whatever your bugaboo is with this team, that you that's also Kyle Shanahan. So everything about this team that you love or hate or are indifferent about falls under the Kyle Shanahan umbrella. And that's just the facts of the way this thing is. It just is. So we can't just judge him as he's only the offensive coordinator because that's not the case. So, and this goes both ways. So that's, that's my only stance with Kyle Shanahan is, and you're right. I mean, I don't watch every team game in and game out, but what I can say is I watch every game that the 49ers play now granted they're going up against a really good defense but last year i mean the defense had its hiccups especially the first half of the season i saw all those too no you're right i mean most teams aren't dialing up as many open receivers as kyle shanahan does there's no doubt about that he does a great job at getting guys open and yes they're not always hit whether it's Trey, jimmy whatever but again he's shopping for the groceries so that's that's my message. That's my overarching message. Whatever your thoughts are about this team, good or bad, put it on Kyle Shanahan's plate. That's the only thing I ask.